Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, hump day, 10-10-2018. Happy, happy National Day in Taiwan. Zhonghua Mingguo. Sure, yeah. Sure how. Huh? 10-10. Anyway, guys, uh, it is uh, Wednesday. We do spare thought for those who are in the path of... Uh, Hurricane uh, Michael down there, barreling down on Panama City and the panhandle <laughs> of Florida, one of the areas that Missy Jen and I drove through on our way from Tallahassee to New Orleans. From some very beautiful beach areas uh, all through that uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi, Mobile, Alabama, Panama City, Pensacola. Beautiful area. I mean, it's all the premier beach resorts on the Gulf uh, are really all hyper concentrated around there and uh, <clears throat> unfortunately that's where the storm is barreling through and unfortunately we do know some people that are in that area within the past some of the YouTube uh, some of the YouTube boys so we, sh we certainly give a thought and prayer for them. Russ had here in uh, Santa Rosa. It is a sad anniversary today. Um, Jen and I, we just go walk back a little bit and talk, talk back this a little bit. Uh, this time last year, we had a beautiful, we had a great weekend in Lake Tahoe. Mm -hmm. We went up to Lake Tahoe for the first time. Went up there, had a great stay, recorded the seafood buffet at Harvey's and uh, Really enjoyed looking around the area. We went uh, pretty much all over the place. You can see some of the cinematic videos of that uh, of that trip. If you look at just put Lake Tahoe in the search box. When we were coming home that Sunday from Lake Tahoe and coming down out of the Sierra Mountains and across the uh, the uh, Central Valley, there the winds were unbelievable coming through. You could see all the all the bushes on the side of the highway and it was one of those strange and rare onshore winds that was blowing from the northeast and it was a wild wind and I remember going to bed that night and I remember telling Missy Jen specifically wow this is gonna this is a really windy night tonight looking at the rancho I hope these big uh, trees don't come down well, I woke up the next morning, it's 5 o'clock, so my get-up time, and I'm looking at my phone, and I've got urgent alerts and messages from family and other people. You've got to get the hell out of there. And I was like, what? You know? Normally, we're thinking earthquakes and stuff like that, right? <clears throat> I thought, oh, well, we had some big earthquake. So I, I uh, hurry up and I eat breakfast and I go outside and I take a walk up the, uh, up the uh, Avenue of Love there. And there's trees down on the road and I'm looking back at the skyline of the city. And it is as orange as can be. And even at uh, 6 a.m. in the morning when I was out there walking, those fires were in full rage. Things like the Hilton were being consumed on the hill. And... It was you couldn't even you couldn't even grasp the scope of what was going on at that time. Nobody could. It was unbelievable. You could not wrap your head around it because you had no idea. All you could see was looking towards downtown was that there was just a orange sky. It was as menacing a sight as I've ever seen. So obviously, Missy Jen, nobody was really going to work that day. The city was on full, uh, you know, panic mode. People were packing up possessions. The fire was nowhere near under control. It was a week later, almost 10 days, when the fire crew started leaving and the National Guard had rolled into the area. We had no idea. It was, there was blazes, multiple blazes around the city. And it was almost like a ring around the center core. <clears throat> Well, the good news that morning, Missy Jan, is that at least the winds had died down. So the fire, mm. fire, and we had fire departments from as far away as Samoa, Australia. And at the peak of the firefighting effort, Missy Jan, more than half of all the firefighting apparatus in the entire state of California 
from the Mexican border to the Oregon border was concentrated here in this area. The unusual factor of this fire, as I've said before, it was the first time since the Great Chicago Fire, I believe it was 1876. It was the first time that a wildfire had ever gotten into a urban, heavily populated urban areas. And as I've said before, uh, as this fire moved through the length of a football field every five minutes, consuming everything in its path, driven by 70 mile an hour winds, there was zero firefighting efforts that night and overnight. It and most was all of the next search day, and rescue. It was all banging on doors, running around, trying to get people to get the hell out. Unfortunately, 43 people didn't make it out of that fire. Husbands and wives jumping into, jumping into swimming pools to try to save themselves up in some of the wealthier areas. As that fire came over... The hills from Napa County and into Sonoma County started over near Calistoga in Napa County. Came roaring eastward over the westward over those hills. And it took out over 2,000 of the high priced homes. I mean, we're talking about fancy dancy homes overlooking the hills. Oh, Nothing yeah. less than 1.2 million up in those places. 1.2 million to 5 million homes. Yeah. Took out Charles Schultz's home. Took out uh, former retired uh, athletes and things, Oakland Raiders, and destroyed untold amounts of memorabilia. Luckily, Charles Schultz, the artist of uh, creator of Peanuts, luckily most of his stuff was in a museum. It was opened a few years before, or he would have lost all of all of his stuff. As it is, his wife had to flee. Jeannie Schultz had to flee at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, she fled all the way to Santa Barbara, California. And I don't know if she's even been back. I'm sure she has in the area, but their home burned to the ground. With probably untold amounts of memorabilia and more personal things in there. So that fire came over the hill and it, it, it wiped out everything in the valleys, the pocket valleys as it moved over and took out 2,500 homes probably before 2 o'clock in the morning. It looked like it must have looked like a valley of hell through there. And those hills with that fire being driven down over the hills, pushing westward. So you had an immediate 2,500 homes. Then it made its way into a place called Mark West Springs, which is another very large community on the west side of Highway, east side of Highway 101. Took out another thousand homes in that area. That's probably by 3 a.m. in the morning. And then unbelievably, this <laughs> fire got down to the Journey's End Mobile Home Park. It took out the Hilton. It took out uh, untold amounts of Paradise Vineyard, Paradise Winery, burned to the ground. It just kept moving down the hill and advanced into a place called Journey's End Mobile Home Park. And it destroyed 200 mobile homes in there probably by 4 a.m. in the morning. It was all over except the shouting in that area. Then unbelievable, unbelievably, the, despite the fact there was a 20-foot wall separating that mobile home park yeah. from highway 101 <clears throat> highway 101 is three and four lanes each direction that fire was so massive it leaped across highway 101 it had to be 150 feet and it caught fire on the other side of 101 and laid waste to motels restaurants the kmart and then it did its final twist of big damage. It got loose into a place called Coffee Park. 1,500 homes by 6 a.m. down to the ground. By that time, and if you haven't ever seen it, see it I'm going to put two, two clips down here. The first clip is my morning going out there before there was any kind of police presence. There was only PG&E trucks telling people there's wires down and be careful. I was able to go out there and get some of that first video, first raw video of the morning out there. You can see that. It's about 10 minutes long, standing on overpasses. And still at that time, Missy Jen, having no concept of what I'm looking at, I had no idea that, that uh, 
6,000 homes had been destroyed in the core of the city. Remember the first time in history really that a wildfire had gotten loose in a major, major high density urban areas of cities. It was not a damn thing to fire department. So you can see that first video clip. The second video clip, Missy Jenna, is the Berkeley Fire Department, which is about 60 miles away, arriving in Santa Rosa about 3 or 4 in the morning. And man, by this time, mm -hmm. they were starting to put it in gear from San Diego, L.A., all kinds of places, Oregon. And that guy was taking video with his cell phone camera riding in his fire truck. And he looks to his right, and everything's on fire coming up Highway 101. He looks to his left, and everything's fire. And I remember, never forget what he says. We don't even know what the hell to save around here. Can you imagine a firefighter coming to the scene of a fire? And just, you know, you throw up your hands and say, where do we begin to fight this? So I'm going to go ahead and link those uh, two videos down below. I don't want to say I hope you enjoy them, but I hope that you find them uh, very watchable. It was something that this city's yet to feel with the full effects. You can imagine the devastation of the tax base. The 80% of the homes were at least 500, 600,000 and above here, and that's gone. You can imagine the $20 million per year hit that that takes on property taxes for a city. <clears throat> the effects of building permits, the effects of a, of a uh, building and a public, uh, you know, a uh, building permit in the Office of uh, Construction in there with everybody trying to get building permits pulled, the overwhelming amount of services. People leaving. People leaving. Doctors. You know, 200 doctors, people. 600 nurses gone. So this is one reason why I didn't retire, because so much of the administrative core of pushing paperwork around was gone out of here. Anyway, we do wish you a happy <coughs> hump day. Thanks for so much for being along with us. Again, spare a thought for the people and a prayer in the path of a very devastating hurricane. Michael, and uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Mm -hmm.